You find yourself wanting to make more gold in Guild Wars 2, but you don't want to sit and grind on the same map for hours on end to achieve your goals? If so, then this video is for you. Today we'll be going over some of the best ways to increase the gold you earn each day that you're playing the game. I personally still utilize most of the methods I'll be sharing with you in this video, even after reaching well over 100,000 liquid gold on my account. I do this because the methods are consistent, and they really do work. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first step in everyone's gold making routine should be to log into the game. On average, login rewards are worth about 2 gold per day, so even if you're not going to be playing on a particular day, it could be worth just spending one minute to log in and claim the reward before you log out. To maximize the value of your login rewards, I strongly recommend choosing legendary crafting materials as your option for the chest of loyalty at the end of each month. Doing so is going to save you a lot of gold when you go to craft legendary items. Another really easy thing that you can add to your daily routine to make more gold are daily achievements. If you open up the hero panel, go to the daily tab, and click on daily achievements, you'll see all 12 options for that day. There's four for PVE, four for PVP, and four for world versus world. All you need to do is complete three of these, and you can mix and match between game modes, and you'll be rewarded with two gold, three spirit shards, and 10 achievement points every single day. I recommend completing World vs. World or PvP dailies instead of the PvE options because they'll also give you a potion of reward track progress, which can give you a lot of additional rewards. Joining a guild with an upgraded guild hall gives you access to synthesizer nodes, which can be quickly farmed every day for some materials. You can also use these nodes to complete some of the daily gathering achievements very easily. It's worth noting that if you're in multiple guilds with maxed halls, you'll only be able to farm one guild synthesizers every day. Just like guild halls, player home instances can be upgraded to contain nodes which can then be harvested for materials every day. The total value of these materials exceeds 5 gold, and it doesn't take very long to farm. It can take a lot of gold to fully stock a home instance, but you don't need to worry about that. If you go to your guild chats, or a racial city map like Radasum, you can easily find someone with a full home instance that will share it with you, if you ask them nicely. Like some of the guild hall locations, the home instances can also be used to complete certain daily gathering achievements. Quartz crystal charging can be done in several locations, but the most convenient is the crate obelisk inside a home instance. Make sure you have your 25 quartz crystals in your inventory, then interact with the crate obelisk to create a charged quartz crystal. This charged quartz crystal can then be used in various profitable crafting recipes like storm collar cores or sky scale treats. There's a variety of items that can be crafted once a day for a decent profit. Lump of Mithrilium is probably one of the most consistent ones, but you can find a full list of daily craftable items and their profits on the Fast Farming website, which I'll link in the description below. There's a set of items in Guild Wars 2 called Converters. These will consume excess materials and currencies you have, like lumps of Aurelium and Bloodstone Dust, and exchange them for items that have a bit of value. None of these converters will make you rich by themselves, but getting a few of these can add around one gold worth of profit to your daily gold routine, while only taking a few seconds to use each day. To acquire these converters, you'll need to complete various achievements. I'll link the wiki page for converters in the description below so you can see what each one of them does and what achievements are required to get them. Working on these achievements is a great way to expand your daily gold making, and I'd advise starting with acquiring the Lay Energy Matter Converter and Gleam of Sentience to get the most value for your time. If you have characters that you don't use regularly, it can be worth parking them in certain locations near chests or nodes, so that you can log onto them once per day and quickly loot the area. There are many such locations, but even just doing two or three of the good ones can yield you several gold in just a few minutes. The Fast Farming website has a page with the most profitable alt parking spots, so I'll link that in the description. Another quick thing that you can add to your daily gold making routine is visiting the United Legions Quayuster in Drizzlewood Coast. This Quayuster allows you to donate common raw materials for Char Legion commendations, which will progress the Glory to the Legions achievements and give you rewards along the way. Some of these transactions are profitable on average, but some aren't. You'll have to check the fast page for Drizzlewood Coast material donations and make sure you're doing only the ones that are profitable. You can also find that page linked in the description. While you're here, you can also buy discounted cash keys every day, which are really useful if you do the Drizzlewood Coast meta. Getting into stuff that can take a little more time, the first thing we have is Ice Brood Saga Strikes. These strikes are 10 player instance content that can be done every day, giving a decent mix of material loot and map currencies. They're also a great way to get into instance content in Guild Wars 2, if you're a beginner. I'd advise gearing a character with a build from the Snowcrows website, link below, 
and starting with what most people refer to as the easy three, which are the Shiver Peaks Pass, Freenir of Joramag, and Voice and Claw of the Fallen Strikes. Once you're comfortable with those, you can move on to doing full runs with all of the Icebreed Saga Strikes for the most loot. You can also open the Vigil Emissary Chest and the Eye of the North once each week after completing all the strikes for even more loot. The last thing I'd recommend adding to your daily routine is Fractals of the Mists. This one probably comes as no surprise to a lot of veteran players. Fractals are relatively short, 5-player instance content that resembles dungeons in most other MMOs. There are four tiers of difficulty in Fractals with a pretty simple theme to the reward structure. The higher tier Fractals you're doing, the more loot you'll get. With Tier 4 dailies and daily challenge motes, experienced Fractal players can rake in 40 gold profit in about an hour every day. To get to this point, you'll want to gear and learn a build from the Discretize website, which will be yet another link in the description. Access to the highest tier Fractals will require Ascended Gear and 150 Agony Resistance. If this seems like too big of a commitment for you, don't worry. Tier 1 Fractals will only require having a level 80 character, so you can get started and give Fractals a try without worrying about any of that other stuff yet. As you progress, you'll start earning more and more gold, and I can promise you that the investment you make gearing a character for Fractals will pay you back several times over. If you're doing Fractals, then you should also definitely make sure to buy your daily discounted keys from the Buy4373 NPC in the Fractal Lobby. You can buy 30 keys for 20 silver each, and 30 more for 25 silver each every day. The first 30 keys are always worth buying. For the second 30 keys, there's yet another page on the Fast Farming website that you can look at to see if they're worth it or not. The only thing to keep in mind is that you should only open encryptions if you have the Recursing Resourcing Mastery unlocked. Without it, you'll always lose money opening Fractal Encryptions, so make sure that you get that as soon as possible. So there you have it. Those are the methods I recommend adding to your daily goldmaking routine. I didn't cover things like daily meta events and pack scout mapping materials in this video because those activities are either less time efficient or more involved. You can add some of those activities or remove some of the ones that I showed to create a daily routine that fits your play style and your desired daily gold income so that it works for you. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate you taking the time to give it a like, and maybe even subscribe if you want to see more gold making videos in the future. Feel free to also leave a comment telling me what some of your favorite daily gold makers are. Thanks for watching.